Hi there, it's Kareem Habibi from Keeper's Nursery. Today is the 15th of March 2024 and today I'm trimming back rootstock growth from my one-year-old apple, uh, well, pear trees today. Uh, I'll get onto the apples later, hopefully, if my, if my knees can uh, hack it. Um, so it's, it's quite nice weather now. This is a job you do when the weather's quite nice. Uh, you don't want it to be wet at all, uh, just because you're using your secateurs quite a lot. So I'm sure every nursery does this at this time of the year. But essentially what we're trying to do is just tidy up the trees, uh, making sure that the, uh, the, the bud, the chip bud, where the, uh, where the sort of variety that we have grafted onto a rootstock that's going to be pretty much the only bit of growth active growth on the tree so we're basically cutting off all the extra rootstock growth uh, because that's well that's going to get taken off anyway but at this stage we you you allow it initially to you allow the tree to um to grow basically all over to begin with because you want the tree to be healthy it also sort of protects that bud because if there's only one rootstock uh, bud grow uh, if there's only one uh, bud growing at the top that's quite a good target for a pest or, or even a you know not even insects but birds I had a lot of damage with the uh, on, on our plum trees where the birds were taking them um, so initially let everything grow and then this early May period you start cutting everything back the whole job takes a couple of weeks in the nursery it's a lot of bending down it's quite painful on the knees uh, so I can't really rush through it I have seen some people on little like skateboards do this sort of job on much bigger nurseries but I, yeah it's it's more bother than it's worth you know I'm still quite young I can do it so let me just show you some examples of what this all looks like so over here we these are all quince rootstocks so you can see here this is a quince leaf, so this is a quince A rootstock, and you can see these are, you know, quite typical quince growth. And then here, hidden behind, that is a pear leaf, so that's completely different. And that's actually where the pear tree is grafted on. Um, yeah, so you should be able to see there. That is where the pear graft is, and that's at the top where I've cut the um, rootstock. So this rootstock was planted in March 2023. It was grafted uh, in August, uh, well it probably, yeah, probably early August 2024. Cut back in March 2020, uh, sorry, August 2023. Cut back in March uh, 2024. And since then, basically, it would have just been a sort of lifeless looking stick at that stage, which I'd cut back to. Um, it's probably got sort of 15 centimeter growth all over here and then the pear at the top which won't be quite as vigorous at this stage that's probably about just under 10 centimeters of growth um, and what we do is we want to cut these back so here's an example of some of the quincy rootstocks where I've cut them back so you can see these sort of wounds down here where I've cut off the uh, the quince rootstock and up here there's a nice pear tree this one's quite healthy looking um, you can see most of these have all taken, which is good, whether all the blue ties are show trees. So this row still needs doing over here. And then after I've done the quinces, um, we also have, these are um, one of the pyrus type rootstocks. This one is called OHXF. Uh, so this rootstock, you can see it looks like pear growth all over it. So I'm going to get a bit closer. So yeah, there's there's pear growth all over it, but um, the top the top bud actually looks slightly different. And you know, once you've got your expert eye, and you can do these quite quickly. But you can see quite you can see down there that's where the graft is, uh, and this this um, sort of main the leader luckily is actually quite vigorous on these, um, as as opposed to on the quince rootstocks where the quince rootstock growth itself is quite um, quite vigorous these are some of the apple examples so you get much less growth on the apples this will be an m27 
um, and the leader, uh, which is the, uh, the where the chip bud would, it was, is already quite strong. The canes were put in when the ground was a bit softer, and then later I'll just tie this in just to make sure it's straight so that um, you don't get any damage. You can see they do flower at this stage as well, so those will have to get taken off. Basically, the apples look a bit <laughs> lifeless. They look lifeless still. The, um, the quinces here... Uh, are, are, are sort of need more attention right now. Here we have uh, quince trees growing on quince. Uh, these ones take a bit more effort to do. So at the top here, you can see there's already a flower. Um, yeah, it does. It usually you get three um, sort of separate buds on each chip bud. So the chip bud was up here. You've got two sides. You've got this central one which actually flowered, which is now branched out as well. I'll probably take the central one off just because of the split. Choose one of these two, probably this one which is quite long. Uh, it takes a bit more effort to work out where those are. We've also got medlars which obviously look different on quince. Um, you get these weird mutant flower things as well where you sort of... Because flowers essentially are just leaves, um, the, the, obviously something's gone a bit weird with this flower where it's decided to grow leaves in the, cent in the central whirl instead of, well, it's already got too many petals. It shouldn't be double petaled, so I don't know what's going on with this one, but, oh, there's one more over here as well. This isn't like a trait of the variety. It's just for whatever reason, it's, it's sort of done the wrong thing. Uh, you do see them occasionally. So this will keep me busy for a few hours. The old knees will, you know, tell me to stop. But uh, it's not it's not my full time job, so it's not so, it's not something that I have to worry about too much. I did go running this morning, so my legs still work, although quite stiff, really. Um, yeah, so hopefully um, that informs you as to what happens at uh, this time of the year in a nursery. Uh, basically keeping the pests off, uh, looking out for anything a bit weird, but basically everything is growing quite quickly at this stage of the year. The plums are, you know, you can noticeably see from where basically you put these blue ties on, you, you put them at a certain height and you notice with the, with the plums, the section at the top suddenly is sort of up here and you think, oh, okay when I tied it I probably tied it near the top so you have to go back in so those plums are growing very very quickly at this time of the year because we've had some rain but it's also been quite warm the other week we had quite a few days over 20 degrees right now it's going to be sort of 18 again today a bit overcast but it's it's a good it's a good reassuring time of the year to see your hard work from the year before has all paid off um, so happy days right now and these trees at this active time of growth we'll put on sort of a couple feet of growth so by by june definitely uh, a lot of these pears will be sort of at least a few feet tall uh, the plums will definitely be sort of three four feet tall at that stage plums tend to sort of tail off they sort of stop growing and then maybe grow on a bit more but it's all almost one big burst of growth with um with apples especially you get a very sort of steady amount of growth by september they are slowing down but they may sort of add a few more inches in september um but they they, they sort of gradually grow whereas plums the reason you really need to sort of cane them and and secure them with ties is because they might put on a foot of growth in a week and that's very sort of weak growth you know slow growing wood is very strong wood um, although, I mean, technically it's not wood at this stage, it's just sort of active lignin. It's, but it's um, apples you don't necessarily need to tie um, if you are in somewhere sheltered, um, but it doesn't hurt. And I've, I've realised over the years, recent years, definitely the, the strength of the wind has changed quite a lot. We get these strong southerly winds and uh, where the scion wood is grafted onto the rootstock where the where the sort of the fusion has happened that graft union they've become quite weak uh well they are sorry they are those are, those are the weakest points of the tree and it's not strong enough to withstand the wind in the first year so i was losing some days after a storm maybe up to 50 trees which 
you do the maths, it's quite a bit of money and uh, quite a lot of effort actually reorganizing which trees I now have to offer to customers who've already bought those trees. So caning the caning the, the, the trees, although it's a sort of, I guess it's a small expense and a bit of effort, was worth doing because I didn't have to sort of have a clean up operation afterwards to try and work out, oh gosh, I'm losing trees and then you know there will be another windy day and another windy day and another windy day. Basically, once the trees lose their leaves, it's not a big problem anymore because you lose that surface area. So it's not like a big sail that's going to catch the wind. The wind can sort of go around the tree, although you do lose it, the occasional tree. But it's quite a good indicator that maybe there was something weak in that union on a tree that does um, snap. But healthy trees snapping, that's just because it's got too windy, uh, sort of... Um, not saying is I don't know why that is but it does seem to be a trend that in the first let's say the first 10 years of me working here never really saw sort of maiden trees snap in the wind apple trees in the last five years I would see sort of dozens if not hundreds uh, snap which is not great it's the same place same 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 rootstock same sign but anyway thank you very very much for watching uh if you have any questions leave comments and all that um i'll make more videos at this time of the year i'm going to be quite busy soon so maybe won't but you know it's quite nice to keep people informed thanks very much if you're buying our trees this year uh still have loads to choose from go on keepersnursery.co.uk uh, i'm sure you'll be able to google it Bye then.